Well, this week in an Amsterdam courtroom, we saw the beginning of what could be both the trial of the century and the crime of the century. What an honour for the Netherlands so early in the century. In the most determined statement of dimitude we've yet seen in Europe, and that's saying something, the Dutch authorities are pushing ahead with the prosecution of an elected parliamentarian for the crime of embarrassing them with the truth. There's an ideological fervour about this prosecution that's almost religious in its intensity because, let's be clear, this is a heresy trial by any other name. They can't refute Mr Wilder's statements, so instead they've resorted to the kind of cheap legal stunt that we'd expect from the likes of Mugabe to shut their opponent up. They've accused him of being divisive and inflammatory, and yes, sometimes the truth can be divisive and inflammatory if it's been suppressed for long enough and has become sufficiently taboo, as it clearly has in the Netherlands. Because according to the prosecution, it doesn't even matter that what he says is true, what matters is that it's illegal. Well, when the truth is against the law, then there's something seriously wrong with the law. Because when the truth is no defence, there is no defence, and the law has no anchor. So it will drift wherever the wind of political expedience blows. And this week it blew straight into a crooked courtroom in Amsterdam, where justice will now be made to fight for its life, starved of the oxygen of truth that gives it life. These are desperate tactics from desperate people, who've tied themselves up in such knots of relativist guilt, they're incapable of acknowledging the truth, let alone dealing with it. They're like somebody who's prepared to chop off their own hand to avoid being seen scratching their ass in public. What makes it worse is they're clinging to something that doesn't even exist. The multicultural bubble burst a long time ago, when Pim Fortein was murdered, when Theo van Gogh was murdered, both for the crime of expressing an opinion in what's supposed to be one of the world's leading liberal democracies. It was then that the Dutch people and everybody else in Europe came face to face with multiculturalism, what it really is and what it really means. On the surface it sounds like a pleasant word, evoking a kind of rainbow society of mutually enriching cultural perspectives. And what could be better than that? But that's not what it is at all, and that was never the intention. If they'd been honest from the start about what it really is, Islamization, they know they'd never have been allowed to get away with it. But people are beginning to realise now that Islam is in fact what they're getting, and it's all they're getting. And that's why the Freedom Party is leading the opinion polls in the Netherlands from nowhere in just a few short years. And it's also why the ruling class is so desperate to destroy Mr Wilders before the next election, because they know his views are popular enough to change things, to put an end to the multicultural lie, and to give the Dutch people back their country. And that's why he's facing trial. Can I say that? Maybe we shouldn't be too surprised it's come to this. After all, they do have a history of ganging up on their popular politicians in the Netherlands. Isn't that how Pim Fortein was murdered? Some leftist lunatic took the establishment and the press at their word that he was a public menace for opposing Islamization and killed him for it. The next day, all the people who'd been vilifying him were suddenly his best friends. They were shocked. How could this have happened? But they all know how it happened. The whole world knows how it happened. And if it hadn't happened, this trial wouldn't be taking place today because Islam wouldn't be the problem it is today. And maybe Amsterdam would still be one of the world's favourite cities and not the kind of place where gay people are afraid to go out for fear of being beaten up by gangs of Muslim youths. The Dutch ruling class has shown that it's prepared to stoop to anything, even as far as undermining the very cornerstone of Western civilization, freedom of speech, to prop up a rotten ideology that's not only dead, but whose corpse is now beginning to smell. And you know that smell. It's that pungent mix of authoritarianism and cowardice that we've all become depressingly familiar with. Certainly here in Britain, we know all about it. We've had 12 years of it. And we haven't forgotten the shameful events of this time last year when Mr Wilders was refused entry to Britain because our government allowed itself to be bullied and threatened by a handful of Muslim loudmouths who took it upon themselves to suppress free speech in a free country and were allowed to get away with it because otherwise they might have been offended. Oh, perish the thought. Why the hell shouldn't Muslims be offended? What are they anyway? Babies? Nobody gives a damn how offended the rest of us are at having our culture squatted by an aggressive religious totalitarianism and being told to shut up about it. And that's why this trial is not just about the Netherlands. It affects all of us. Now, the Dutch people have got 
a well-deserved reputation for tolerance and open-mindedness, the very qualities, many would argue, that got him into this mess in the first place. So they're a bit further down the road of multicultural dimitude than most countries, but it's a road we're all travelling in the West, and if we stay on it, we'll all arrive at the same unhappy crossroads in another courtroom, in another country. It's only a matter of time. Fear of free speech is the symptom of a profoundly neurotic and dishonest society, which is what we've got on our hands now. All over the Western world is the same sorry story. We have governments and police forces who cringe before Islam while whittling away our civil liberties because of Islam. We have a media that can't even use the word Islam in connection with terrorism when the two things couldn't be more intimately connected if they were Siamese twins. Yet they're quite happy to label Mr. Wilders as a far-right politician in the kind of casual slander that passes for journalism these days, especially at the wretched BBC, who've been too politically correct even to acknowledge that this trial is taking place. Anyone who isn't angry and ashamed that it is taking place doesn't deserve to live in a free society. The trial has already left as dark a stain on Dutch history as McCarthyism left on American history and it's only going to get worse. Because not only have the crooked judges denied Mr Wilders the witnesses he needs to defend himself, but they've also made sure that the trial will coincide with the election campaign, making it as difficult as possible for him to put his case to the people. This man is a hero, not a criminal. And it's time the rest of us stood up and said so loud and clear because there's too much at stake to be polite anymore and there's too much at stake to be afraid anymore. This intellectual terrorism has got to stop. Our birthright is being deliberately sold from under us by people who don't have the right of ownership and we are now on the verge of bequeathing our children and grandchildren the kind of society that we wouldn't want to be born into. It doesn't get any more immoral or cowardly than that. You know, in the English language we have an expression, Dutch courage. It's not really courage at all, it's the kind of courage you get when you've had a bit too much alcohol to drink. Well, now there's a new expression, Dutch justice. It's not really justice at all. It's the kind of justice you get when you've overdosed on cultural relativism and your spine has completely disappeared. Shame on the Netherlands. Shame on the Western media for not raising a howl of protest against this outrageous attack on our basic freedom. And shame upon shame on the crooked judges of Amsterdam. Was there something else? Oh, yeah. Peace. Be nice, wouldn't it?